Hey, so another guided recording today. Uh, we are going to create a tweet on Twitter or X or whatever it is called. Um, so here is this open on another monitor. Sorry. I am going to start on twitter.com. I think X just redirects there. And we are going to record a click step of the sign in button then confirm this and then let's go ahead and actually do that click ourselves then let's record a type step that was a little ugly and i'll type my username i'm not really active on twitter it's not worth looking me up and then let's record a click step of the next button again these are the scenarios when you can use something like find by text if uh, this is randomized sometimes like Instagram, for example, sometimes they have two different types of login pages they get sent to. Uh, like if you go to Instagram.com, you see one. If you just logged out from Instagram or if you were kicked out of your currently logged in session, you get a different one. Those are good use cases for find by text in case the buttons are always changing. So anyways, we're not going to do that this time. We always could. Then I'm going to go ahead and record that next button. Let's go ahead and actually do the click ourselves and then our password. Let's do that. I hope I remember this. And then um, if it doesn't show you the confirm button, you can just click elsewhere. And then we'll click confirm now, record another click of the login button again. Um, I don't like how that didn't trace it perfectly. I don't think it would really matter that much, but let's go ahead and just re-click and get the wider version of the button. Again, another scenario for find by text. So I'll confirm that and then I will click the login button. So I don't know what's gonna pop up on my feed. That's not that bad. What we're gonna do is, which, ooh, we'll do a, we could probably do media too, uh, since we have the upload from URL now. So I'll record another type step in what is happening. So I'll say, hello, this is my tweet and I'll confirm this. And then let's grab an icon from somewhere. One second. I think I can grab, cool. We'll grab the Task Magic logo. Um, let's go ahead and what is this input? Okay, so this is something that we get a lot of questions about is when you should use type or when you should use click, especially with drop downs. So something like this looks like a drop down, but we're seeing that it's we're seeing that it's pretty it's obviously pretty custom. This isn't like your normal iOS Android native pop up that you get. So for this, we're going to want to record two different click steps. This probably doesn't matter for you, but I'm just making these test posts private and it gives you another example. So what I'm going to do after I have a logo ready, um, we can probably set that logo step up now, actually. Uh, we're going to go ahead and record a click step of the image media, I think it was called, icon, and then I'll confirm that. Uh, and then we're going to want to convert that step to upload. And then let's paste the URL of the image I want to upload. And that should be that for uploading. Now let's record our click steps of that drop down. So here we're going to click this Chevron icon, confirm. Let's go do that click ourselves. And then we're going to record another click step. I don't like how that looks ugly. And we're going to select circle. This is another opportunity, of course, for find by text. So let's say that you have a bunch of different audiences. I've never used audiences on Twitter, so I don't really know the purpose here. Um, but let's say that this list wasn't always perfect. Let's say that the audience you wanted to post to wasn't always the first one, but you wanted to make sure you posted to the right audience. We can use find by text to make sure that when it opens this drop down, it selects the correct one. So that's all we need. We'll go ahead and do that cell ourselves. And then I think we covered everything. So this one doesn't have an image in the actual tweet and that doesn't really matter. Um, it has my tweet. Now let's just record the post button. So I'll record a click step. Again, of course, the beautiful opportunity for find by text. Let's say that this changed, like Twitter sometimes randomized it, whatever it's going to be. Um, those are some easy ways that we can get around sites randomizing things like that. But this is all the automation is going to be. I'll go ahead and click I'm done. And let's connect this to a Google Sheet. 
Um, let me find one that I can reuse really quick. I'll pause this. All right, this is my yellow pages one from my last video, but that's okay. Let's make this uh, descriptor. Let's make this post media. Um, this is where you could use like circle and then it could use like it could search for whatever circle it wanted, but I'm not going to go through that right now. Uh, this is all I want to do. Let's add a new task. Let's add a new logo for our Maybe we'll add a here. We'll add our 14 day money back guarantee as our media. And then our post is going to be hello from task magic. So what we're going to do is I've already shared this sheet with automations at taskmagic.com. Make sure you do that before setting this up. So I'll go to setup trigger and then let's do, we'll probably do, we could do webhook or we could do Google sheets. We'll do webhook actually. Let's do webhook. Um, I'm going to use Postman to set up my webhook. If you guys have another service that is uh, sending the data to something like Zapier, actually, let me, I'll just use Zapier. I shouldn't use Postman. Let me set this up really quick. What we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that our Twitter automation is triggered whenever a webhook event, which can be, you know, a new row added in a Google Sheet new row created on an air table, whatever it's going to be. Whenever that happens and it sends data here, it's going to go make a tweet with that information. So if I go in Zapier, we're going to go to our actions. Oh, I don't know if I have webhooks. Can it, let me set it up still. Cool. I just don't think I can turn it on. Okay. So what we're going to set up, and this is the same if it's Pabli, if it's um, NADN, if it's make, if it's active pieces, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be pretty much the same inputs that you're seeing here. We're going to set a post request and then I'll click continue. The URL is going to be what we have here. I'll go ahead and copy this. Then it's important we change the payload type to JSON. And then for data, we're going to want to do our post. And then this can be like, hello from Zapier. And then we can do our media or image URL type image. And that is going to be, I lost the image that I had. Here we go. That will be this and nothing else needs to be done. We can go ahead and click continue and then let's test this step. Once it says success true, we can come back to task magic and click check for new events, just like we did for the sheet change automation. And look at that. We have our image and we have our post. It doesn't matter that it didn't come, even though this was set up a uh, post image and this came through image post it does not matter. It does not play any role. I think it's just sorting to be alphabetical. So I'll go ahead and save this trigger. And then what we want to do is we want to change our tweet to be at post and we want to change our, where is it? Our upload file to be at image. So what this will do is this is going to go to Twitter. It's going to sign in with our username, our password, click login. It's going to type our post and then it's going to upload some image. We should probably add a delay right here uh, to allow it a little bit of time to upload. And then we are going to click that Chevron icon. That's a little ugly. Let's name this step. Click Chevron down or select circle um, part one select circle part two, whatever we want to do, right? This is that drop down that we were handling. And then we are clicking the post button. So that is going to be it for the automation. We can go ahead and because we set the data up here, we can go ahead and test this automation now. So if I click play steps, this is going to run with that data that came from my, um, from the webhook, which is from Zapier that we just set up. So this will start with Twitter. And we'll see it fail through the first couple steps because this is going to be trying to type in our login information, but obviously that login screen isn't present here, but because all steps are defaulted to allow error, it's going to go ahead and try this step. And if it's not successful, it's going to keep running the automation. So we'll see in a second here, it's going to select the what is happening box and start to type that post that we sent from Zapier. once it gets to that step, of course. So 
hello from Zapier. And then I don't remember if it uploads the image first. Yeah, it does. So there's our beautiful 14 day money back guarantee if you buy from the site. Then we're gonna have those two click steps that are clicking that drop down and then uh, circle. And then this should post it to Twitter. So that is that. We might wanna add a delay to allow time for the tweet to be posted in case whatever upload time needs to be handled. But what we can see now is if I turn this on from uh, desktop, we can go back to Zapier and let's test this. So what I'm gonna do to test this is I'm gonna click these three dots and then always show browser window. So what this means is when the webhook is sent, it's gonna run from my computer and it's gonna have the browser in front of me. And this is just for me to quickly test things. I'm not gonna let it play through the entire video. Um, I'll just let it show, I guess it start typing or whatever we wanna do so that you guys can see it's working there. But um, you'll wanna turn this off when you're done testing because what'll happen is, is when this automation is triggered, it'll run behind the scenes with no browser, that way you don't know it's running. Uh, and that way it's not invading on any work you're trying to do. So let's go ahead and in Zapier, I'm gonna make this uh, part two, and then I don't really feel like finding another image, so I won't do that, but I'm gonna go ahead and click continue, retest step, and what happens is, is when I click send here, it's gonna start that automation. This is, I didn't name it, but you, you see it's the same. This is gonna start that automation with that new data from Zapier. So if I click data in, we're gonna see part two and the same image. So I won't let this play all the way through. You can just trust me, it's gonna do what it did last time. And it's gonna go ahead and create that tweet with that data from that webhook. Um, same thing goes if you're doing a scheduled automation, a loop through data, if you're doing a sheet change, all things like that.